Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In this very short video, I'm going to give you some Lightroom masking tips. probably know there's new masking in Lightroom and in today's video I just want to give you some tips that will hopefully help you better use it. We're going to jump right into it with the first tip that you probably already know. If you want to see the mask overlay hit the O key on your keyboard and you'll see the overlay hit the O key again and it goes away. If you want to invert a mask for example I have this mask of the sky if I wanted to invert it a quick and easy way to do it is to hit the apostrophe key and you'll invert the mask. Hit, hit it again, you'll invert it back. Now, this next tip um, I'm giving you because I read something on a blog and it said to create a new mask, hit the end key. But there's more to it than that. For example, I'll hit the end key on my keyboard right now and it does create a new mask. But what it's actually doing, it's creating a new mask which is um, the same mask that was currently active. Let me undo that and better explain. I have mask 2 currently active. Mask 2 is a mask of the sky. If I hit the end key, I'll create another sky mask. But this sky mask will have all the controls zeroed out. Now why would you want to do that? Well, in this case, on this specific example, if I apply a mask to the sky and do some adjustments to the sky, maybe my next step would be to do adjustments to everything else except the sky. Well, an easy way to do that is to create a sky mask, another one, and invert it. And a way to do that with keyboard shortcuts is hit the end key. It will create that second sky mask and then invert it by hitting the apostrophe key. So that's a little more to it than just hitting the end key and then to just show you what I'm talking about active mask if I make mask one active that's the mask of the subject if I hit the end key it will create a new mask that is a subject mask so there is a little bit more to than just hitting that end key to create a new mask but it does come in very handy because quite often we're applying a mask to a sky, then a second mask to everything else, and just hit end, hit apostrophe, and you're good to go. So um, I think that's a really powerful, actually, keyboard shortcut, but you really have to understand how it works. Now, you probably know that if you click on these three dots next to the mask, you'll get some functionality there. You also could uh, get to that uh, with the edit pins. So there's a pin here. If I just hover over it, I'll see the mask. If I right click on it, I'll get that same functionality there as well. Um, you could rename mask. I mean, mask one, it's a mask of the lighthouse. It, mask one doesn't really tell me that. If I get a lot of mask, it may get confusing. So I could just double click on the word mask one and then go in there and put, I don't know, lighthouse. And I could rename mask two as well. Double click on it and I could call this sky. So you could just rename those to make them a little more obvious what they are. Um, and finally, um, often we're intersecting a mask. And to get to intersect, you have to like click on these three dots here and intersect mask width and then go over. There's actually a, a faster and easy, easier way. Hold in the Alt or Option key. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And when you do that, you'll see the Add and Subtract buttons turn into a single intersect button. Click on that and then you could click what you want the mask to intersect intersect with. So that is a lot easier than clicking on those three dots, in my opinion, going to intersect with and going over to the mask you want to intersect with. And finally, I want to draw your attention to the toolbar. That's the area above the film strip and below the image. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. It turns the toolbar off and on. And over on the left side of the toolbar, you have some control over the overlay. Uh, by default, we have this um, red overlay. If I click here, I could change that to a color overlay on black and white, an image on black and white, an image on black, image on white, 
and finally white on black. I prefer the red overlay. Of course, you could get to that functionality over here by clicking on these three dots as well. And finally, you have some control over this edit pin. Um, I prefer auto. With auto, when I'm hovering over the image, it is there. When I come off the image, it disappears. If you don't like that uh, functionality, you could change it to always so it's always showing. You could change it to selected so only the active edit pin is showing and it will show all the time. Or you could change it to never and you won't see that edit pin ever. Um, I, like I said, I prefer auto. And that's it. That's some tips that hopefully will help you better utilize Lightroom's new masking. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.